That's really natural bokeh. It's so cool. Today we are looking at something that you unfortunately probably can't buy because it's exclusive to Japan. But I wanted to check this phone out anyway because on a hardware level, it's really cool. And it's Leica's first smartphone. The Lit, L Lights, I think? Lights Phone One. Let's see what's in the box. Oh, it goes from a white box to a black box with a little red Leica logo. Okay, here's the phone. We'll look at that in a second. A SIM removal tool. And, oh, we have a case. And what looks to be a type C to type A adapter. And then there's this rubber case. Oh, and it has a little Leica logo. So even when you put a case on this phone, you never lose your Leica logo. That's important, guys. Or you can tape it. <laughs> oh yeah, just a lot of Leica users tape their um, logos because you don't want people walking on the street knowing that you have a Leica, which is like $10,000 just strapped to you. So the price of this phone is roughly $1,700 USD. It's not exact because it's actually a Japanese yen conversion. It's actually a rebadged version of the Shark Aquios R6, which is also only available in Japan and a couple other choice markets. But the cool feature of both of those phones is that this phone and the Sharp have a one inch sensor on the camera body just like the Sony Xperia Pro I that I checked out recently. Now, unfortunately for the Pro I, something that we actually weren't able to mention in the video at the time that we made it, was the one inch sensor in that phone doesn't actually use the entire sensor. I'm not 100% sure if this phone uses an entire one inch sensor, but I think it does. Okay, so let's take a physical tour of the phone. On the right, we have a volume rocker, an assistant button, and then power and lock. And then you actually notice on the phone, it's knurled on both sides for grip, which is a nice touch. On the bottom, we have a headphone jack, type C, a speaker and mic. On the top, we've got a, is it dual SIM? Let's see. Nope, but it has a single SIM and a micro SD expansion, which apparently is up to one terabyte, which is pretty solid. I really like how it feels in the hand. We've got a Gorilla Glass matte black silicone feeling back. If you've ever used or held a Leica, this feels like it is very inspired by the design of their cameras because you have that cylindrical smoothness to the entire phone and then it's a black and silver finish with the obviously lovely Leica red badge. And then we have a lens cap, guys. A lens cap on a smartphone camera. It sticks on magnetically, you see that? <laughs> it's kind of silly, like, that they have this, I mean, I get it because the camera bump is like almost as thick as the phone, guys. Like, look at that. The case. Andy, do you see this? Aesthetically, even though it's a thicker phone and it's kind of on the bigger side, I really like it so far. Now, this phone is $1,700 US. And what do you get for that? Well, it has a Snapdragon 888, obviously the one inch sensor that we're going to test in a second, a 6.6 .6 inch IGZO OLED, one to 240 hertz variable refresh rate display, but it feels like pretty good for variable refresh rate. This phone kind of has a weird resolution. It's 2730 by 1260 with a 2000 nit peak brightness, 12 gigs of RAM and a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So you can start to see with all those things it kind of adds up to a lot and that's probably why they're charging 1700 USD. But the biggest selling feature of course is this one inch sensor. All right, let's open the camera app. Now, like I said that it's a pretty simple app that lets you just completely focus on taking photos. Honestly, it looks like a pretty standard smartphone camera app. So we've got, yeah, three by two, 20 megapixels. We're using the full thing. Um, no in-body image stabilization. So it's all electronic image stabilization for the photo and video. When you go from 1.0 to 2.0, it zooms in digitally. But when you go from 0.7 to 1.0, it just shows you grid lines, I think, of what it's taking. Let me see that photo, let's see. Yeah, okay, interesting. The 0.7 is the full sensor, and the 0.1 is just taking a crop of that full sensor image. So the camera in the Leica, if I haven't gone over it already, is the Sumicron 1.9 19 millimeter ASPH, which stands for aspherical. The quick explanation of that is that the lens is sharper than a non-aspherical version of this design. Let's take a photo here. 
And I actually have an iPhone and a Pixel 6 Pro. Leica has a very interesting mode that they've added to the camera app called Light Looks. And it's a black and white version that they've kind of color toned. It, it looks good, like right off the bat, it has that feeling that you'd get taking a black and white image on like a Leica monochrome camera. It has like the depth. Guys, I know it all feels vague in description, but Leica is a feeling brand. They want to emit a feeling in the use of their cameras, in the looks of their images, and the vibe of that is what they're trying to translate to this phone. Now also, I realize in the camera app, there is an M. Photo mode. And if you go to the settings for this mode, that is where you see the format where you can save JPEG and RAW. And it has a little balancing, so you know if you're kind of off kilter. So I just realized that on top of Leica's version of the camera app, there's also the lights camera. And that's just a really simple camera app that gives you a focus point, middle grid frame, autofocus, gallery button, and then a shutter, that's it. So I think this is what they meant by an experience that is completely uninterrupted by any of the stuff that you could do with your camera. And it's just to focus on taking photos. Why don't we have a look at how the speakers sound and how the display looks. Even though they're stereo and one of them is front facing, it's not good. Um, okay, let's take a look at the display. So just looking at the HDR quality of this display, it looks pretty good. Yeah, the display on this thing is pretty awesome. And even though the audio isn't good, the main focus of this phone is the camera. So why don't we also test the video? But first, a word from our sponsor, Secret Labs. Thanks to Secret Labs for sponsoring today's video. Secret Labs chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play. Their new Titan Evo 2022 chair keeps you feeling comfortable for longer. It has four-way lumbar support, ultra comfortable line of different seat materials and more. All chairs come with a five year extended warranty and a 49 day return policy. Head to the link in the video description and check out Secret Labs today. Let's try the camera. One, here's the iPhone. And here's the pixel. Uh, let's go to like Alex's car or something. Alex's car is such a good color for photos. Whoa, careful Andy. One, two, three. Okay, and this is just a quick video test to give you an idea of what this looks like. It's also taking AI photos. Oh yeah, there's some shallow depth of field there. That's actually not bad. But yeah, I'm actually like, I'm, as I get closer to you, I'm closer to your camera, the bokeh gets better. All right, let's go back inside, it's getting cold. So I'm just taking a look at the video that we took really quickly. Video is not really the focus of this phone. I don't expect it to be very good. Here's Jono. It looks okay. And the bokeh is pretty natural looking for a phone. Looks decently shadow. Autofocus is struggling a little bit. Where this phone shines is definitely the stills that you can get off of it. So on the left, we have the iPhone, which looks very much like an iPhone image, super bright, HDR-y almost feeling. And on the left, this is the Leica image. Honestly, looks pretty good to me. Now, it's hard to say if the blur is that much significantly better, because these aren't quite at the exact same angle. But even on his bike here, you can see how much sharper that is on the iPhone and how much less in focus on the Leica. And the Leica has kind of like a natural contrasty, but like the look that you'd get out of a camera and not a smartphone. Let's look at the Pixel as well, actually. Ooh, Pixel's really contrasty in a way that I actually don't love in this photo. It's clear that with the computational photography background stuff, the iPhone and the Pixel are sharpened on capture, whereas the Leica is not. Okay, let's take a look at that photo that we took outside. Pixels are quite a bit warmer. It's more contrasty as well. I mean, they look like flagship smartphone photos. And then the Leica. So yeah, the Leica is quite a bit wider than the Pixel and the iPhone from the same spot. So on this tree image, from a detail perspective, I'm sure a lot of people, if polled, would like the Pixel photo and the iPhone photo more. But when I look at it from like 
a photography point of view, which of these images I would prefer to edit and actually kind of try to manipulate and do something with, I think I'd go with the Leica because yes, it's not as sharp out of the box, but you could probably get it if you like that punchier look, but you also have a shallower depth of field. Like you can see on the close up of the leaf here, how much more out of focus the back leaf that's a decent amount more shallow. It actually is quite noticeable in this image. Man, I'm impressed. All right, let's take a look at our last photo. Man, the iPhone image is like very bright. Shadows are brought up as expected. The Leica photo is darker, contrastier, but what I was seeing. And then the pixel image, man, the pixel this time around really goes for the post-processing because you see every little detail in the shadows here. Again, compared to the Leica, it's a lot brighter, a photo. But the Leica is what I was seeing with my eyes. So between the three of these cameras, the Leica is the most real. Some of you out there might prefer the iPhone and the Pixel image. And it is very convenient. But for me, someone who enjoys editing photos and who would potentially edit a photo off my phone if I thought it was good enough, I think I'm gonna go with the Leica in the photo examples that I have here. It's really quite an enjoyable camera to use. Now, I wanna test one more thing. I actually don't know that even if you went through all the effort to order this phone from Japan, can you use your SIM and just pop it in with no issues? All right, let me just see if I can call you, Andy. It's ringing. Brad is calling. Okay, so that part works. How come my data's not working? <sighs> I'm not sure why. It's not in the scope of this video for me to troubleshoot that. What was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, depth of field is clearly more shallow. And the photos I think are, in my opinion, better than the iPhone and the Pixel from a like photographer's perspective. You can edit this. The colors are very true to life. That's really natural bokeh. It's so cool. Okay, cool. See you later. Bye. So if you put the effort into buying this phone, just make sure you know that it'll work in your region. And I hope if they ever make a phone like this again, if Leica keeps going, that they release this worldwide because now I want one, even though it's expensive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. This phone is really cool and I hope it's just a sign of the future of smartphones and the cameras that can be put into them because I have no confirmation of this. If this phone uses the entire one inch sensor on the phone, unlike the Sony, this might be one of the best smartphone cameras ever made and not for everybody to be very clear, but for me, absolutely.